Hi, everyone, and, and thank you for joining this demo. We will try to do a short demo about the upcoming Selenium version. Uh, I know maybe there are many questions, so we'll try to go quickly through the slides, do the demo quickly, and leave as much time as possible for all the questions you may have. Um, so I am Diego Molina. I am an open source and Selenium enthusiast. I love testing, and as a consequence of that, I ended up uh, being a Selenium committer and also part of the technical team that leads the, the project in that sense. I am a software engineer uh, in the open source team at Source Labs. And if you want to follow me in any of the social uh, media platforms like Twitter or GitHub, um, just follow me there. What are we gonna be covering today? First of all, uh, we're gonna talk about some changes in the Selenium project recently. Uh, we're gonna discuss why the Selenium 4 version is important and what are the main features that are gonna be there. So short update on the Selenium project. First of all, we have a new look, which is not really that new, like one and a half years old or so. And the main thing is that the old logo is gone. Uh, but I have also seen in some websites that people are using this logo, which was never an official one. So please spread the word that these logos are not valid anymore. And the current logo is this one. This is the image of the Selenium project. And I'm saying Selenium project because the Selenium project is an umbrella project that covers three different uh, artifacts. WebDriver, which is the one that we use normally as the language bindings. And um, then we also have the Selenium IDE, which has been rewritten from scratch from uh, mostly the effort uh, from our friends in AppliTools. And um, I know that the roadmap of the Selenium ID is uh, leaning towards having a similar experience as Cypress. So you will be able to do all the things you do there uh, with the ID, but it will take a while, uh, but that's where the ID is heading to. And the Selenium Grid, which is being written from scratch and it will be available with the Selenium 4 release. We also have a new and modern website. We have new docs, we have code examples in other languages. And overall, we're making the onboarding process for new users way more simple. So please head to selenium.dev and leave us any feedback you may have in GitHub issues or joining the, the Slack channel and or IRC channel that we have. But not all changes are superficial, you know. To keep having a long lasting project, we have done some internal organization in roles and responsibilities. We have now a governance model that guides the work being done in the project in a more transparent way. And more importantly, it describes how anyone can become a part of the project. We don't only value code contributions, we also value contributions such as conference organization, meetups, uh, blog posting, helping with GitHub uh, triage issues, and so on. So we have a, a, a PLC. So it's a group that leads the project in, as a whole. We have the TLC, which is the Technical Leadership, Leadership Committee, which drives the project in the technical aspect. We have the committers who are mainly the people who maintain all the, the bindings and the other projects in the, in the group. And we have you and us, the community. But why are we doing all this internal work? And why am I talking about this? Because Selenium belongs to the Software Freedom Conservancy which is a non-profit charity that helps to promote, improve, develop, and defend free, libre, and open source software. Uh, Selenium is part of this group along of others like Git, Homebrew, or QEMO. And this means that Selenium is always and will be always 100 open source, not governed by any company or the interests of any company like any of the, of the new tools that are coming up in the market. We are committed to be 100% open and we are all volunteers. That's why all of us, the PLC, the committers, the community and the TLC, we need to work together to keep Selenium as a project of a, being a first class citizen. Um, basically because being more transparent helps to this process and what I just mentioned in the previous slides are the initial steps towards that. So join us and contribute. Go to this URL, check all the paths we have to talk to you. We are very open and accessible and we're a truly open community. 
So let's jump to why is the version four of Selenium important? The first important aspect is that the standard W3C web driver is the way to go. It has been fully adopted and it has been implemented since the last release of the Selenium 3 series. Um, from the Selenium 4 release, all language bindings will support only W3C, except Java, which will support partly with some help, uh, the legacy protocol. But why do we do all this? I mean, why are we running into all these issues? And the main purpose of this is to have stable user-facing APIs. Talking about some history of the project, the browser drivers before Chrome driver or Gecko driver existed, um, they were implemented by the Selenium project. So it was a lot of work but thankfully, through some evolution and conversations and collaboration, each vendor, so Google, Apple, Microsoft, and, and, and Mozilla, started to implement their own driver, right? Except Internet Explorer, which, by the way, thank you, Jim Evans, for keeping the Internet Explorer users happy. Uh, but then, if you remember, we could have different behaviors between drivers. I don't know if any of you bumped into issues where you had a test working in Firefox and it didn't work in Chrome or vice versa. And basically it was because the implementations were slightly different. And having a standard agreed by all the major vendors, again, Apple, Mozilla, Microsoft, and Google, this embraces cross-browser automation. And this is the way to go forward. But all this sounds nice, but what does this mean for me as a user of Selenium or as a user of the web driver protocol? Um, at some point, browser drivers will only work with W3C. So either if you use Source Labs or not, upgrading is a good idea. Because anyway, if you're an upgrade, you don't get the new features that I'm going to show in a moment. Um, if you're using the legacy protocol, for example, and you're a, a Source Labs user, um, your capabilities will look like this. So you will have the username, the access key, and the name, which are um, custom source labs capabilities. And again, you declare the browser you want to use in the platform and the version. But if you want to start using the W3C protocol, we will need some slight changes where source labs specific capabilities need to be in their own block. In this case, username, access key, and name, they are part of the source options block. And please note that the platform is now called platform name and browser is called browser version. So this is super important when you want to start a new session in Source Labs, because only in this way, we can guarantee that you will have a W3C session and therefore you will be using the latest and greatest features. If you want to learn more, please head to this URL. We will share the slides later and you will see how you can work on this uh, on your own. If you want more details, we're going to have a webinar with Simon. Um, he's the web driver creator and the lead of the Selenium project. It will be on June 18, so save the date and uh, follow us for uh, more updates on this. OK, so I have eaten nine minutes of presentation, but let's go. Let's talk about the Selenium 4 features. One of the first ones is called relative locators. And the main idea behind this is that we have different ways of find elements in a web page, but we are trying to have a new approach where people can actually find elements in a visual way. So let me show you an example. First of all, this is a website that I kind of forked it from Angie Jones' website. I think she's watching this, um, her um, bookstore. Um, so I just took her website and I adapted it to put some uh, sauce bots on it. So the main idea that I want to, to do here is uh, I want to find one of these elements. I want to find an element um, that is this one, the London sauce bot. So with relative locators, we have different ways of finding locators, like saying, I want to find this look this element which is below the Warsaw source bot 
and on the left of the Boston source, source bot. You can also find things like to the right, above, below, nearby, and so on. So let's see how this example looks in code. I'm gonna start Safari driver uh, session locally, and I'm gonna load the website. I'm just gonna wait for a moment so you can see that the website is loading. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna zoom a bit. I'm gonna find an element, and this is already Selenium 4, the alphas, with the tag name list, right? And this element will be on the left of Boston and just below Warsaw. I'm gonna make it blurry and then unblurry so you can see it. So remember, left of Boston, below Warsaw. So this source code will look a bit blurry. Let's run this test and see how it goes. So it loads, we wait a bit. And now what happens is uh, that there is a blurry element. It goes back to its original state and that's it. So this is quite simple. And for example, let's say that we want to find the Berlin source bot, right? So it's below the New York one and to the right of Boston. So let's try that. So it's right of Boston, uh, yeah. And it's below New York. So let's try this again. And we will see that it works again. So let's try something else. Let's try to find the source code of the Bay Area. How would that be? We could say it's below Portland and next to Berlin to the right, but we could also say it's above the November source bot and right to Berlin. So let's try that. It's to the right of Berlin and above the November source bot. Let's see how that works. It didn't work, right? Because even if we have these relative locators who are very friendly, we need to be as specific as possible because the Bay Area source bot is above November, is to the right of Berlin, but it's also below Portland. So this means that whenever Selenium 4 in the alphas is trying to look for this element that we're trying to find, it's listing and by coincidence, it will list first Portland because it just organizes them by appearance. Therefore, please try this feature, report bugs or different types of uses so we can actually uh, take your input and improve it as well. So this was perhaps an error for us, but maybe it's not an error from the development point of view. So that's what we're looking for, for feedback to see if we need to change things or make it more, uh, I don't know, friendly in a way. Okay, let's move to the next. The main one, interacting with CDP. So what is CDP? It's the Chrome debugging protocol. So you have heard that Cypress, Puppeteer, and Playwright are like the new tools and they look pretty cool. Uh, and they're actually quite cool. I mean, because normally new things make people more engaging, but sometimes people can just not use new tools. So that's why in the Selenium project, we're helping the um, trustworthy and all time users and the new time users as well. So they don't need to be switching between tools and we can stay using WebDriver and interacting with CDP. Uh, one of the main features is uh, that all this uh, debugging protocol provides and also the competitor tools is listening to the events from the browser. And Selenium will do that in version four. Um, but please always remember that it's a debugging protocol. So it's low level and it's complicated. Sometimes it's really hard to interact with it. So what we're trying at the Selenium project is to find a simple way 
to make it easy to use. Therefore, what I'm going to show, maybe there is a more simple way to do it, but it depends on the feedback you can give us to uh, in the project. So let's try some CDP things. Let's try this first example. We're going to block some URLs. How can you use CDP? Let's start from there. I'm going to start a local Chrome driver session. I'm going to get the dev tools. I'm going to make a parenthesis here. I'm using the Alpha 5 uh, release of Selenium. We're going to release soon the Alpha 6. So please uh, stay tuned. Uh, so I'm going to create a session in DevTools. And now going to the block URLs, I am basically going to block all the URLs that have either style sheets or PNG images. I'm going to add a listener to the dev tools so I can actually double check that these URLs are, are being blocked. So this is the part where I can actually listen from browser events. And then I'm going to load this website. I'm going to see that no images and no styles load. I'm going to just erase all the things I did and I'm going to load it again. So let's try that and see how it looks. So. No images, no styles. I clean up all the rules I did and I load it again. So there it is. Let's try one more. With this new feature, you can add extra headers to your requests. In this case, I'm going to go to this website that it's going to show the, the headers that you have in the request. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a custom header which will be called conference with the value SOSCON 2020. I'm going to listen that this actually happens. And in the end, I'm going to be checking that the header is going to be there. But let's see it. Let's not look at the code the whole time. In this case, this website is just showing us the headers normally, the ones that we have in our application. But now I'm going to refresh the website based on the configuration I did. And we can see that the header that I added is going to be there. So why is this helpful? How can you use this? Sometimes you have things like A-B testing or you have feature flags in your applications that are normally unlocked through headers. Now you can set up your headers and you can make testing in a more simple way. I'm going to omit this one, the page screenshot, because we can already do it with Selenium without using um, CDP. But let's jump into this example. I can now get full page screenshots through CDP. So let's see how this looks. Uh, first, uh, I need to do a bit of uh, understanding of the page, of course. I need to see how tall and how, width, uh, how wide the page is. And I need to see. Um, the scale factor of the of the page as well. So I sent some messages uh, to CDP to tell what the configuration is for this uh, action. And then basically I do the page dot capture screenshot. So let's see how this looks. Uh, in the end, I get the, the raw data and I save it in a, in a file. So this is not possible in Selenium right now, but in Selenium 4, it will be possible through CDP. So I load the Source Labs website. I take the screenshot, I wait a moment while I save it. And if I look here and I open this file, I will see that I was able to take a full screenshot of the website. This is something that is normally not possible. And many people who do visual testing will have the benefit of using this feature. So this is something quite nice. And let's finish with something quite simple, like you can also emulate a time zone. Sometimes we need to do that. And right now, the most simple way is to, for example, set an environment variable in a Docker container or use uh, source labs. Uh, but you can now do it on your own. You can set the time zone. For example, I am in the CET time zone. My local time is 9.21 in the night. So if I run this, um, I will see a different time zone, for example. 
So we'll see a different time. Three in the morning of tomorrow already in Australia. And this is a way that you can also test uh, and tweak your websites in a different way. So you can do your test scripts in a more uh, simple way without needing a bunch of tools to do all this. Okay, let's jump back to the presentation. The last part that I'm not gonna demo because it will take a lot, a lot of time. So the Selenium Grid has uh, a complete new face. Um, it has a router, it has a distributor, it has a session map, and it has its nodes. So the router is in charge of directing the request to the right component. And the distributor is basically determining where to run a new session. So all income requests come here and base it on if it's a new session, it will go to the distributor and then afterwards to the nodes. And when the session is created, there will be a map between the session ID and the node. So for future requests, the router will exactly guide the request directly to the node. Uh, this is a very quick part because I want to leave time for questions. So to summarize things, uh, relative locators, CDP, take advantage of it. It's coming soon in the grid as well and in source stops as well. Uh, so please join us, contribute, uh, go to this URL and join us um, in the community. And that was it. I'm gonna start opening for questions right now, but if we don't have time to answer all the questions, I already created a Slack channel in the May 12th uh, Slack workspace. What is new setting for? So please join us there. Uh, I'm just gonna switch back to the tool so we can actually answer some questions. Um, okay. So I'm gonna click here in Q&A. So Ray Bloom is asking Selenium 4 release date. Oh, but this is scrolling. Um, I, so when is the next Selenium date? Um, well, we have an internal date in the project um, that is not next Christmas of this year. So we hope to do it this year, honestly. Uh, our goal was the summer, but with all the current events, uh, we actually couldn't meet and solve and figure out a few things, but uh, it it should be definitely before this Christmas. But I am not the lead of the project, so please don't take my word seriously. Um, can relative locators be used as waiters? Um, a relative locator is giving you, um, in the end, uh, a normal locator. So yes, it could be done like that. Mm. Okay, it's a bit complicated because when I start reading a question, then a new question comes in and then scrolls down. Um, won't this break if we have an adaptive or responsive page? I'm assuming relative locators. And the, question, the answer is maybe or maybe not. That's why we need uh, people trying it and giving us feedback. CDP access is amazing. Are there plans for Firefox Tech Tools API access? It's on the same way. Um, I haven't run it with Firefox, but I know that some other people in the project were doing that and they were having good results uh, because there is an initial implementation of it in, in Firefox. So we will we will publish more about that. Absolutely, and also in the new in the new edge. Yeah. Is your call available in GitHub? Yes, it is. Um, actually, one moment, I had the link around here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put it here. Oh, okay. One second. Yeah, I just put it there. Um, can we use the Chrome Dev tools to do something like change the geolocation? Yes, that is possible, Angie. Uh, and um, I think I saw an example somewhere, but yeah, it is possible. Uh, from Joe White, can you use CDP to wait until all the page AJAX calls have completed? Um, I don't know. I, I guess you can, 
because that's a use case from CDP. So I, I guess you can, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Can CDP manipulate REST requests or responses? Um, yeah, so when I was doing this uh, interception, um, basically what I'm doing is analyzing the incoming um, replies from the backend, and I can actually do mocks. So I was playing with images, I was playing with uh, like doing a screenshot, but that's one of the strong things you can do now. You can basically say, whatever comes back or when you do a request to this url please don't go to the real backend but go to this mock and then you can actually simplify your tests in, in that way so so you can do that yes next one from mark to use cdp you have to connect to chrome driver directly uh, i'm sorry it's like scrolling or is it available through Selenium Grid? Uh, yeah, it will be available through Selenium Grid. It's um, I'm I'm helping on that, but most of the code is is uh, thankfully like Simon has done a lot of it, and I'm just working on on supporting him in, in however we however we can. From Sari, um, want using relative locators break if we have okay. I think we yeah yeah. If you have a responsive page, for example, if we, if the locators if the elements are placed in a way. Uh, when the page is maximized, of course, like in the, if the page is like, like with, a, with a smaller size, yeah, that could break. And, and that's something that you, you need to consider in your tests. Uh, can grid select a node based on availability? Yeah, Dennis, that can be done. Uh, actually, Marcus Merrill did a pull request that added that functionality. And uh, yes, it's possible. From Ermanta, is this available in Node.js web driver? Yeah, we recently got a new committer, and he has been putting a lot of uh, effort in, in the JavaScript bindings. Actually, the relative locators were implemented one week ago, so uh, many of these things are available now. Um, with the new version of Docker of Selenium Grid, I just read, yeah, so. The new version of Grid is already working in Docker. With not, not all the functionalities are there, but um, it will work similarly to Selenium, yes. Can Selenium 4 fully support Angular? Um, it's a mix of different things. We have to remember that Selenium 4 is not a testing framework. Selenium 4 is a library that you can use to automate browsers. In the same way that you, you wouldn't use plain JavaScript to build a website, that's why you use things like Angular, Vue, or React, because those things help you to build a website. If you want to use a, a testing framework, you should use different things that are built on top of Selenium WebDriver. Uh, from Dennis, can grid select a node based on availability? Uh, I think, yeah, we answered that. Any changes from reporting perspective? Uh, again, um, Selenium WebDriver doesn't do any reporting. Selenium WebDriver is just a library that can be used for automation, for browser automation. So you need to build things on top of that. Um, and Jose is asking, where can I find more information about these new features? Uh, we're gonna share this recording. We are doing public meetings in the Selenium project that we're posting on Twitter. So always please join us and ask and, and we need to do more marketing in the project that's true but uh we're working on that and please join us if you feel like helping us on that aspect uh i don't know if i covered all the questions but remember that i created a slack channel if you have more questions and there is more in the chat so um i think we're one minute after the end of the talk uh what should we do through this now? Should we continue or shall we just end it? If you could just write somewhere. <laughs> okay, so Theresa is giving me the order that we're done. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, especially to Angie because I used her website to basically as an example. Um, and if you have any questions, please join the in the Slack channel, what is new in Selenium 4, and thank you all for taking the time to be here.